Jimmy. Yep, and we are live, Josh. I'm oh, just going for it. I'm just so going good. for it. I've not even, <laughs> not, even, not even let me get set. I know. I can barely talk. I've got a croaky voice. You're in a giant feeler jacket that looks about seven sizes too big for you. But regardless, Rangers are in the final of the Europa League. What an effing night. Jeez, oh, Joshua Barry, what on earth have we just witnessed? And how on God's name are we going to get to Seville? Because I noticed the flights have just jumped up to £1,700. Um, so that's not great, but yeah. we'll get there. No, we'll find a way. I think at this rate, I think me and uh, Derek will be taking two hours at the wheel each. Yeah. Um, I mean... Craig Vickers tweeted out it's been a long season with a photo of John Lundstrom getting sent off against Alash Kurt, which is obviously the first Europa League game I broke this season. Um or the qualifier, sorry. Uh, and this night and and it has been. I mean it feels that moment feels years ago. Um but tonight was just I mean, I know it's our job to describe these things, Johnny, but I'm kinda of struggling to because there was, I just spoke to Giovanni Van Bronckhorst about it and he, and he said, you know, the crowd played an important point. Tedesco said it was the best he'd ever seen, the, the, the opposition manager. I think the crowd stayed with the team at key moments. But underpinning all the kind of performance elements, the tactics elements, the players standing up and delivering, I just think there's this unwavering belief. And I think you see that for Rangers. Anyone that was in the ground tonight will know when that goal went in. Just as when Dortmund scored two goals before, before half time. Just as when Braga, um, you know, pulled the goal back with ten men, there, there was that horrible feeling in the background of of a momentum being killed and the reality that Rangers would have to build it themselves again. But they went up the pitch. I can't even remember how that goal went in. All I remember is watching the plate the ball and it working its way to John Lundstrom and just thinking this would be absolutely perfect. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was Ryan Kent better. again, mate. Right, Ryan Kent right. with a uh, bit of trickery, gets himself free. Took the man one way, took him the other, stood him up, got to the byline, stood up to the back post, and I don't know what the Leipzig keeper was doing, mate. He flapped at it and yeah. put it on a plate for John Lundstrom. But listen, the big scouser, he could have panicked there, and he didn't. Yeah. He absolutely yeah. didn't. Um, yeah. So you've got to give him credit because he popped it in the net and completes the turnaround of all turnarounds. It's now better than Mark Hately in terms of Phoenix from the Flames stuff, absolutely incredible. Joshua, listen, I wasn't at the game, but it was absolutely pounding through the, the telly, the atmosphere. It, it sounded incredible. And where did it rank yeah. in terms of Braga, Dortmund? I mean, I thought Dortmund was impossible to top. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think there's the top, and obviously it's easy to say that time upon time, um, that's a natural succession of what happens. But I think, you know... I, the start is, is so quick and that matches the crowd's atmosphere they generated before the game. And then you work yourself into a position where you're 2-0 up. And much like, Johnny, the disbelief when you go 3-0 up against Red Star, much like the disbelief when you go 5-2 up against Dortmund, or you you know eventually score the third crucial goal against Braga, I think there's a real release within the stadium. What I think was probably a little bit different about tonight was there was the realisation that this is actually happening. And I had this coming into the ground tonight where, you know, we we talk about Rangers as, as much as anyone because we do it uh, day to day. I just realised, you know, this is actually a game away from a European final. Um, you know, and, and, and looking back on the last three seasons, I remember a game here against Rapid Vienna where Morello scores a double. And the novelty of being back involved in European competition generated an atmosphere in and of itself. Then you think back to a game against Leon, the 2-0 game, and how kind of flat it was and how almost yeah. a bit of a strange atmosphere. And you get to tonight and it was just, I think, a fantastic celebration of this team, of the journey that this team has taken um, the support on. And, you know, last month, I think there was a lot of criticism about this team and justifiably so because they lost the league and I don't think it was expected that they'd get, they'd get to this stage. Um, I've just seen Giovanni Van Bronco there have a nice moment with his family down on the pitch. Uh, he was a canvas man in Ibrox all night. Um, and, and, and yeah, but now, you know, this this team has, I think, done pretty remarkable things. And 
you look at individuals tonight, Glenn Kamara for me, Johnny, he's not had a great season, but in that first half, he was remarkable. That touch, the Incredible touch the first goal. Oh, fantastic. John Lundstrom, obviously. Calvin Bassey just had a really interesting answer from Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. He was asked about Bassey and he was saying, you were saying, Johnny, before, at some point when we've been speaking today, we've spoken a lot. You were saying, um, you know, the manager will see, obviously, things that no one else really sees. And Van Bronckhorst was saying, look, in that 3-1 Hibs Cup semi-final defeat, which you remember Van Bronckhorst was watching from the, the sidelines, or sorry, the, 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 the stands, he said there was one moment where Bassey came out of the defence after moving to centre-back and pressurised someone. And he said, in that moment, I've seen what he could offer to this team. And, and you just look at this journey from that moment from what Van Bronco started to, to now to build on the good work Stephen Gerrard did, but to adapt and evolve it, whereby Rangers starting at 3 4 3 tonight, John Lundstrom's on the right side of the fence. There's all these variables, um, and it, it's just quite unbelievable. Fantastic sporting story. I don't know how much Rangers spent in the summer, Johnny, but I think Leipzig spent 100 million. Yeah. To say that Rangers aren't supposed to be at this stage of European competition, I think, is a complete understatement. And it is just a remarkable achievement. I think we'll rightly spend a lot of time thinking about it and just feel very privileged to have been here um, because I know this is a game and, and a, a success story that will be talked about for a long time. The difference is this time, I think Rangers, not that they didn't deserve there to be there in 2008 whatsoever, but I think you'll agree it was a different... Totally different. A different, feel to it, different feel to it. And what Van Bronco oh. said in the press conference there was, look, finals are nice if you win them. He's been in a Champions League final. He's been in a World Cup final. He's won one, he's lost the other. He knows what it takes. Josh has gone. You've gone You've gone silent there, Josh. I don't know what's happened to your, uh, your audio. You still there? Okay. Well, what I, I'll, I'll, hopefully you can get back, Joshua. Um, I can kind of hear you go off and come back on. But what I would say about this performance is... There's no reason to fear this Eintracht Frankfurt side, none whatsoever. This is the third best German side that Rangers have come up against. They've already dispatched the best in, in Dortmund. Leipzig, gone. And now Frankfurt, lie in wait. And I think this is a, an unbelievable opportunity. I, I can't imagine there'll ever be a better opportunity for a Scottish club to lift a European trophy than what Rangers are about to have right now against the... Uh, against Eintracht Frankfurt, the chance of, of lifting that trophy is going to be really, really good. I'm just saying, Joshua, it's the third best team, Eintracht Frankfurt, that, that Rangers have played in terms of German teams this season. They yeah. are the weaker of the yeah. team. And it's going to be incredibly difficult. They're a very good side. They beat West Ham home and away. But there'll never be a better chance. And the other thing I would say is, Joshua, and this is so crucial, and I hope people are realising how big this could be, that was another four point three million pounds added to the or uh, four point three million euros added to the coffers tonight. If Rangers win, it's eight point three in prize money alone. Factor in TV money, factor in ticket sales, factor in the goodwill factor that's going to be surrounding the club and merchandising. This is going to be huge. Yeah. Not only that, if they win the game, the money that is going to be avail uh, available is sensational. Direct passage into the top seeds of the Champions League. Direct Super passage Cup. and top yeah. Super Cup. Super Cup against Liverpool. Wouldn't mind that. Wouldn't mind that. I know. You'll, may, you'll maybe have to... Already uh, beaten Real Madrid this season, mate. Nothing to fear. True, uh, true. <laughs> that would be a nice symmetry, wouldn't it? One piece of... Um, one Something that makes sense within this kind of crazy season. Um, absolutely. But, uh, but it, the rewards are spectacular. I think beyond anything that any Scottish club has seen before. This will be the richest game in Scottish football history. Of yeah. that, there is no doubt. And I think Rangers have got a sensational opportunity to go out and do something that will mark them down as legends. Forget yeah. what Barry Ferguson has to, do, has to say, folks. <laughs> the league is nothing compared to this. If Rangers yeah. win this, this is worth three league titles. This yeah. is legendary. And on the season, the 50th anniversary of, of 1972, and the club's 150th anniversary, it's remarkable. It was a good yeah. season to set up a Rangers website, Joshua. 
it was uh, it was in, in, in hindsight it was a very good decision I was speaking to uh, our good friend and contributor to the website Stevie Clifford and he was saying that you know the 50 years the 150 years um, there is undeniably there is something so special about this European run a couple other factors I think Johnny is James Tavernier has scored the opening goal in all four home ties um, that Rangers have played in the knockout stages and his ability to deliver is just top scorer in the Europa League he will be the top scorer in the Europa League that's a right back we're talking about what an achievement that is that's Uh, something that I love with him yeah absolutely and um, I mean you could single out so many individuals tonight I think overall the the job uh, again you've seen when you see Leipzig in the the flesh and from Kuku's goal I I think nothing epitomised it better than that the speed of, of, of movement the way that Rangers managed to limit them, I think, was really impressive. And perhaps you didn't see quite how good Leipzig could be because of quite how good Rangers were. Um, but I just thought everyone tonight was was absolutely fantastic. The only player I thought maybe struggled a little bit when he came on was, was Sakala, but he still, you know, made his impact. He was involved in and around it for the goal. Um, as you say, I thought Ryan Kent, another kind of performance to um, showcase his, how good he can be when he's, when he's attacking space. Um, Scott Wright, I think he did really well. You know, as we spoke about at halftime, which seems an eternity ago, it was his pressure that kind of catalyzed the second goal. And, and for me, Kamara, a player who hasn't had a good season, but that was a reminder of why there was so much excitement back in whenever it was, Johnny, that he signed his contract, October or whatever. Joe Rebo, I thought, did pretty well until he had to come off. Um, Connor Goldson, again, absolutely excellent up against Poulsen. I don't think he put a foot wrong apart from that one in the bottom corner where he could have got sent off. Al McGregor made a big save, was good with his feet. Um, so just, you know, player after player that is completely deserving. Yanis Hadji was going around the pitch at the end as well and you forget that had he not scored that goal against Bromby, Rangers wouldn't even be in this conversation. You know, and, and what was that, 75th minute goal, I think, Johnny, in the 1-1 I mean, draw? I, mate, Penny for Yanis Hadji and Alfredo Morelos' his thoughts... Penny for yeah. Steven Gerrard's thoughts. I mean, yeah. there's so much that comes from this for us to talk about. I mean, it's just a remarkable achievement. I, I never thought that I would see this again in my lifetime. When it happened in 2008, I thought that was it. That was the the end of Scottish clubs doing this kind uh-huh. of thing. And, and listen, since then, football has only widened. The gap between the rich and poor has only widened. For Rangers to have gone through what they've gone through and to, to basically do this 10 years later, mm-hmm. it's a remarkable showing of what kind of a club this is yeah. and how big this club is, how it's been able to bounce back. It, it's truly incredible. And this is one where no one can diminish this. You know, Celtic fans and Rangers fans are always going to be going after each other about everything. But this is one where Rangers have been so good. They totally deserved it tonight. Even the XG backs mm-hmm. up that. Yeah, Rangers have done this on the front foot by being better than the teams they've played. There is nothing that can diminish this achievement. It is absolutely a tactical triumph, a technical triumph. And these players will be rightly lionised for the rest of their days just for getting to this final. And if they can win it, they'll be immortalised, Joshua. Will be mm-hmm. taught their names will ring out through history for the next 50, 60, 70 years. It won't be forgotten, just like the ones that lifted the trophy in Barcelona are still yeah. talked about today. That's yeah. how big this is. Absolutely. Yeah. Just as you speak, Johnny, Aaron Ramsey's son has just hit the post. Oof. Almost, <laughs> scored, the four, almost scored the fourth goal of the night. It was a good strike. Well, I completely, that... completely agree with you. Just a, a remarkable occasion, a remarkable group of players. Um, and just very privileged to be uh, talking about it and, and, and be here and, and um, I'm feel confident. You know, you had great confidence in the team today. I did. I was slightly slightly less optimistic, but, you know, who couldn't be optimistic about the team's chances going into the final because time and again, they've exceeded expectation and business day occasion and um, it's just been an absolutely fantastic journey. Regular watcher Graham Morrison in tears here. So proud of the team tonight. Five Euro finals. Now go win it, Jers. Wonderful, wonderful to see so many people so happy after everything the club's been through in the last 10 years as well. To, to have this at the end of the rainbow, 
uh, it's just a remarkable result. And I, yeah, the, the, what words are difficult to find at this moment, um, even yeah. for the likes of us who talk for a living, because the, the level of achievement that we're talking about here is absolutely sensational. And uh, as I say, th this is a night that will be that will live long in the memory. In terms of uh, the presser afterwards, Joshua. Um, and uh, Geo, was it just Geo? Was there a player there? Who, what was the, who, who else was there? Just, just Geo um, and the the um, Leipzig manager. There, I think a few of the players. Yeah, what did Tedesco so, say? Um, I'm trying to think what was noticeable. I mean, he he kind of said Rangers took their chances. The big takeaway was the what he said about Rangers, um, the the crowds playing such a big part and, and kind of the best atmosphere that he'd ever seen. And I think that was, you know, anyone that was, was here will, will know that. That was certainly the the big takeaway. I mean, that's an atmosphere that will spoke, be spoken about for a long, long, long time. Um, yeah. I mean, we're obviously in, we're in the gantry here and just behind us and the kind of, you can see the shelf behind me. That was full of people uh, jumping up on that. Um, people were climbing everywhere. John Monstrum's song got sung with the same intensity as I'm feeling it, which tells you how much uh, he was feeling appreciated around these parts. Um, yeah. and, and that def definitely carried them home, especially when you think about the, the atmosphere away in, in Leipzig. And obviously I was over there and we spoke about that Leipzig atmosphere and in hindsight and how it was a different type of atmosphere. I think the emotion of, of uh, the Ibrox crowd is, is what was it's kind of power tonight because there was a tiny flatness right after that goal, but then right the players right there, sorry, the, the sports is right back at it. Um and uh that's what Van Bronco said they played a big role big role in helping us. But aside from all that, aside from all the intangibles, Rangers were brilliant. They took the chances. A powerful team performance, tactically astute as you say. Big performers in particular for me tonight, Kent and Kamara shown why they've been so coveted at points and why they will go on to play and have excellent careers because they're top, top players. And that's that's the takeaway. Rangers completely deserve to be here. 16 goals over four ties, outscored Dortmund and yeah. Leipzig. Um, th there's none ounce of luck about it for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and credit too to Stephen Gerrard. I mentioned him earlier on. Um, I'm sure he'll be delighted, but also a little bit jealous. And then uh, you'll be having to think about um, his decision probably to go to Aston Villa. But this is his team that he's built. Um, whether or not he would have got this far or not, it's obviously something we could discuss in detail. But uh, he deserves an immense amount of credit for bringing these players to the club and uh, and building a team that has been able to do this. It's quite remarkable. And as I say, mm -hmm. totally different to the Walter Smith team, which was a really an incredible achievement by Walter in getting that team as far as he oh, yeah. did. But this team has, has done it on their own merits by being better than the teams they've played. They've not had to fight and scrap and... And, and get lucky, you know. They had to. Do, they've done it on their own steam, and they've done it with credit. It's it's been absolutely remarkable. I keep saying it over and over again. I'm going to say it all day and all night and tomorrow as well. Um, but I'm just blown away, blown away by what we've seen tonight. Uh, an incredible night for Scottish football. Um, Joshua, there's one last thing here. Um, yeah. Somebody's uh, saying about your jacket. This is the Rangers of you need to get Joshua a jacket that fits him. Um, <laughs> on top of all the shampoo palaver from earlier on today, it seems like you're becoming something of a fashion icon in these situations. Well, this this Johnny, this jacket is my friend who owns a vintage brand, and it looks more oversized than it is because it's not buttoned up. But it is a yeah. deliberate oversized look, so no one needs to fear that I am not clothed uh, properly. But um, yeah. always appreciate any advice. Well, I'm going to let you go. We're going to do this uh, much more of a deep dive tomorrow morning and we'll hopefully get into some of the tactics and uh, yeah, uh, and some of the, the detail around the game. We'll obviously have all the stats in from Statsbomb. Uh, and what we're going to probably do now, guys, I'm going to be 100% honest with you, Joshua is probably going to be on Skyscanner now for the next few hours trying to find a way to get to Seville that doesn't cost the absolute earth. So mm. good luck to that. And, you know, feeling that, it's, I mean, it's only a 27 hour drive, Josh. 1800. 28, 28, 28. It's easy to hear. You see, when you've got a European final at the end of it, it sounds quite fun to me. You know what I mean? Absolutely. We stop Listen. along the way. It's a privilege to go there, Johnny. You know, we'll Listen, make it'll work. make great we'll make video work. content for the website, wonderful YouTube mm -hmm. content. TikTok will be flying. But I'll tell you what, that's a long drive back. The drive there will be fine. A long drive, drive back. back. Long drive back. 
but I've got plenty of uh, uh, plenty of political podcasts to catch up on, so Derek will have to put up with that. Oh God, I'm not sure he'd be too keen on that. He'll be uh, he'll be wanting <laughs> the. Uh, I mean, I don't even want to speculate what Derek listens to. To be honest, um, it won't it won't be political podcast. That's for sure. Um, but listen, let's not go there and let's not bully Derek while he's not around to stand up for himself. He is currently enjoying his the sun in uh, I think it's Malaga. He might just it might yeah. just be better to just stay. It might be cheapest for him to just stay there, mate. Stay out there. That, yeah, that no, you're not wrong. Forward. I can right, go and okay, I guys. can go and join. Him. Yeah, you can go. Um, right, thanks for uh, tuning in, guys. It's been great to talk to you. Sorry, it's not a little bit longer. It's obviously getting quite late. 20 minutes is probably enough for us at this time of night, um, but we will bugger off and we will be back tomorrow sharp at 9.30 with a lot more detail. And well, we might, Johnny, we might, be, we, might be, we might be about 10 o'clock because one, one of us remember has an engagement at 9, just so you don't promise the half past 9 and people are waiting in. So I think it'll probably be 10. Okay, 10 o'clock. 10, well, yeah. There or thereabouts. We'll be there around there sometime in the morning. It might be better for 10 o'clock, given that neither of us is probably going to get any sleep tonight. So anyway, folks, you have a good one. I'm sure nobody uh, in the Rangers family will be getting much sleep tonight. Let's be honest. I think people will be pounding uh, the the pillows uh, regardless, because it's very difficult to get down after a a game like that. But um, try your best. Guys, if you want to support what we do, and we know many of you do, and we're so thankful for all the support we get. We've got so many subscribers now. But get onto the website. It's three pounds for three months coverage. That'll cover you for Seville, for Hamden, for all the transfer stuff in the preseason. We'll be all over all that, um, and take you right into the start of next season as well. And what a season that's going to be! But listen, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Get onto the website and support us. We can't do it unless you get on there and do that. That really, really does help us put on these kind of videos. Help us do the the, the briefings in the morning, all our TikTok content, all our Twitter content, and of course the ton of stuff that we do on the website. So get on there, please. Um, I'll put the subscription in the comments. Subscription link is three quid for three months. Can't say fair on that. Less than a pint uh, in most places in Glasgow. And that guarantees you ad-free content from myself, Joshua and Derek, and many others as well. And there's lots and lots of good stuff on there. So listen, I'm going to stop rambling on. I'm sure you'll go and uh, subscribe. But in the meantime, uh, enjoy tonight.